Hey everyone, in this lesson, we are gonna begin looking at our physics project. Now, this mini project is where we are going to be learning about Godot's physics system, okay? And it is gonna be a little game involving a player that we can push around with the mouse cursor and watch as it interacts and bounces around a bunch of different cubes, okay? So let's hop over into Godot and have a look at how we can set this up. So first of all, we need to create ourselves a brand new scene. So I'm going to go scene, new scene, and this is going to be a 2D project. So we are going to set the root node to be a 2D scene. And we are then going to rename this node to be main, since I like making my root nodes called domain. And then we are going to save the scene. Now we are going to save this. Um, We're going to be creating a new folder. So let's, before we do that, go down to our file system, right click, new folder, and call this one physics, okay? We can then save our scene, save it to that physics folder. So we want to go up in the path, select the physics folder, open that up, and rename this to be our physics.tscn. Hit save, and here we are. Now, the first thing we need to do is create ourselves our player. Now, uh, included with this course in the course files tab is a downloadable zip file which contains all of the assets you'll need for this course, although you can use your own sprites if you wish. So when you download and extract the contents of that folder, you should have a two folders here, loops project and physics project. Inside a physics project, you should have two sprites, a crate and a physics character. We are going to select those and drag them down into that physics folder inside of our file system, okay? So we'll select those drag them into physics. There we go. Now what we're going to do is we are going to create our player. Now our player is not going to be an area 2D or a character body 2D. Instead it is going to be a rigid body 2D. So we can add a new node here, look for a rigid body 2D and create that. Now what is a rigid body 2D? Well a rigid body is basically an object that can be affected by forces, it can collide with objects, it has friction, it has mass inertia, um, and it's basically what you'd expect from a real life object that interacts with the physical environment. So I'm going to rename the rigid body to be player, okay? So let's get our physics character sprite and drag that into our scene here, making that a child of player. I'm going to rename it to be Sprite since I like naming my nodes pretty much exactly what they are and what they do. Uh, we'll set its position to be 0 on the X and 0 on the Y so that it is in the direct center of the rigid body. Now you may notice that the Sprite is quite blurry and that is because of the uh, filtering mode for textures. So to fix this we can go up to Project, Project Settings, and then in Project Settings we're going to go down to where we have Textures. And where we have our default texture filter, we're going to change that from linear to nearest. And that basically means that instead of trying to blur the pixels together to make it look like a more uh, more concise image, it's going to render each pixel specifically. And there we go. Now, of course, this is only if you're using uh, pixel art. If you're using uh, higher res images, then you probably want to keep um, linear on. So now we also need a collider for our rigid body in order for it to actually work. Because uh, if it doesn't have a collider, then it doesn't really serve a purpose. So we're going to right click on player, go add child node, and look for a collision shape 2D. We're going to set that shape to be a new rectangular shape, and we can then resize it to fit the bounds of that sprite. And there we go. So now that we have our player rigid body, what can it actually do? Well, let's see an action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to this button here, which is run current scene or F6 is the shortcut. Press play. And as you can see, it's a bit hard to see, but our player actually fell with gravity. So before we continue, let's go ahead and add in a camera. So I'm going to create a new node of type camera 2D. There we go. Um, and if we zoom out, we can actually see this purple outline, what it's rendering. Uh, let's zoom it in a bit. So I'm going to set the zoom to be two. So now we can press play and have a look and see if it works. So I'll press play and there we go. And as you can see, it was pretty quick, but our character actually began falling down. And that is because they are being affected by gravity. 
Now, if we select average body here, um, let's move it up a bit so we can actually see it a bit more. We'll press play again. And as you can see, there they go falling. Now, over here in the inspector, we can modify all of the different settings when it comes to a rigid body. Mass basically defines, you know, how heavy an object is, and that will affect um, the amount of force that gets applied to it. Um, if a lighter object, for example, hits into a heavy object, that heavy object isn't going to move as far if it is heavier than the light object, for example. We then have inertia, uh, gravity scale, which defines how much gravity is being applied. We also have a bunch of other options as well that you can modify and change. Uh, you can add linear drag, you can add angular drag, you can add constant forces. There's a lot of stuff you can do with a rigid body 2D. So if I were to move the gravity scale down to about, um, let's just say zero, you'll notice that when I press play, nothing happens. It just stays there. And that's because it is no longer being affected by gravity. Now, how do we actually get our character to start moving around? Okay, well, to do this, what we're going to do is we are going to select our player. We're going to go down here in the inspector and we are going to create a brand new script, which I'm going to call our physics player. Now, inside of this script, make sure that it is extending rigid body 2D as we do need to access these specific properties. What we are going to do is delete the ready and process function since we won't be needing those. And we are going to create a variable called hit force of type float. And this is going to be equal to 50. Now hit force is basically going to be the amount of force we are going to apply to our character whenever we click. Now, how are we going to detect a click? Well, in fact, we are actually going to use the process function. So let's go down here and recreate that. So func process and with the delta parameter. Now we are going to check to see if our mouth, if our left mouse button is being pressed. And to do that, we can just go if input dot is underscore mouse button pressed, mouse button underscore left. Then what we are going to do is we first of all need to get the direction that we want to move. And the direction is basically going to be the uh, is basically going to be the angle from our player here to wherever our mouse cursor is. So if I'm over here and I click, that's up, down here is down, right and left. Okay, so we basically want to find the direction vector and move in that and basically hit ourselves in that direction. So to do this, I'm going to create a variable called dir for direction. And this is going to be equal to our global underscore position dot direction two and that we want to get the direction to our get underscore global mouse position, okay? So we are getting our position and we are calculating the direction to our mouse. What we can do then is call the apply underscore impulse function. We need to give it a vector um, and this is just gonna be our direction multiplied by hit force. So now if we save that and we press play again, you should see that whenever I click, our player goes moving in that direction, okay? But as you can see, they are flying all over the place and it's kind of hard to control. So what we need to do is apply some drag to our player. Otherwise, they'll keep moving on forever as if they were in, um, you know, in space where there's no air resistance. So I'm going to select our player right here. We are going to go down to where we have linear. Open that up. And here we can go to damp. And this basically damps our velocity uh, over time, and I'm just going to set this here to be one. And now if I press play, you'll see that whenever I move, we get hit and then we slow down. Okay. And you can of course modify this as well. If you wish, um, we can also change our mass and I'll show you how that affects it. So if I change our mass to five, we are all of a sudden going to be moving a lot slower. And the reason why is because, um, if you have something that is weighing one kilo and something that's weighing five kilo, it's going to require a lot more force to push the thing that is five kilos compared to the thing that is one kilo. So that is just a look at how we have our mass and our damp, which affects um, quite a bit when it comes to our character control here. Now, in fact, I'm actually going to zoom in this a little bit more just so we can get a better view. So if we go 2D here, select our camera, um, I'm going to bump this up to four, press play. There we go that's going to be a bit better like so. Now in the next lesson, we are going to be adding in our crates, which are also going to be physics objects. And we're going to be finishing off this little project right here.
Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be finishing off our physics project right here. And to do that, we are going to be creating some crates that we are going to be moving around with our player. So to do this, I'm going to create a new node of type rigidbody2d once again. I'm going to rename this to be called crate. And this crate is going to have a sprite of the crate.png. We can make that a child of the crate, rename that to be sprite set its position to zero on the X and zero on the Y. And then we can move this crate over here a bit. We then want to add on a collision shape 2D node. So collision shape 2D. We then want to give it a shape of rectangular and we can then modify its bounds a bit so it fits correctly. And there we go. Okay, so we got our collider on our shape right here. Now what we need to do is just press play and test it out. But first we need to select our crate and make sure that it doesn't fall to the ground. So we're gonna set the gravity scale to be zero. Um, we'll keep the mass at one. Now, if we press play, you'll notice that we can move towards the crate. And if we hit it, it begins to move around. Whoops, and I just tapped out there. Let's press play again. So yeah, we can move around here. We can hit the crate. And as you can see, whenever I hit it, it will basically um, move wherever we bounce, you know, it's just like real life when you hit something um, with another object, it's going to bounce off it. Um, but we can also add some drag to this crate because right now it's just going to be floating around forever. So I'll open up linear, set the damp to be three, and we can then press play and test it out again. So we'll hit the crate, it moves, it stops. And there we go. So let's go ahead, let's save this crate as a um, physics, oh, as, a, as a scene I mean, so I'll drag it to a physics folder, save that as crate. We can then duplicate this crate scene right here, control D, and we are just going to create a load of different crates here um, for our player to fly around in and collide with, okay? Okay, so now we can press play, and as you can see, we can move around and all these crates are going to interact with each other. Now, when it comes to physics inside of Godot, um, there's quite a lot you can do of it. Um, there are many different game ideas. If you have a player that you want to be able to move a crate to maybe reach a higher place in a platformer, you can just make that crate a physics object and the player should be able to push it along. Um, yeah, and there's many other game types as well that you can use for physics. Um, I mean, I, I couldn't have 100 right now, but I'm sure you can probably think of a bunch as well. So experimenting with the rigid body 2D uh, component and also the rigid body in 3D as well, that also works as a 3D physics object. Um, yeah, I recommend you experiment with it, see what you can do and try and make some creative games. So that is our physics project done. Thank you for watching.